everybody welcome back I'm doing something a little different today I'm going to show you how I paint landscapes on top of some of my boxes just like that one there oh that's not a landscape that's Chloe anyway let's get started all right I've got it set up here hopefully we don't fall over and once again rock and roll I've got my wet palette all set up and my Joe Sonia paint and I just have a top of a heart box that I like to paint um, so just a simple landscape scene here. There we go. And my um, brush today is not a brush. It's a piece of paper towel. All right, so I'm going to start, add a little water to it. I am going to dip into my warm white of my Joe Sonia paints, and let's get going. So I want to have a mountain in the back. So here we go. So a while back, I discovered that I wanted to paint these scenes, but yet I wasn't happy with how they were coming when I painted them with brushes. So I'm always trying to utilize stuff around me. For example, when I paint on practice boards and stuff, I'll use the backs of um, oh, cereal boxes. I'll cut up the boxes and then base coat the back of it, whatever color of a piece that I'm going to do, and I'll use that. All right, so now, see, we already have a foundation of our mountains. Now, I've done a video like this before, but I, I did it in, um, oh, fast motion. I can't remember what it's called. I'm a little slow today. I know I said that last week, too. You know, with, uh, what is it, 12 days to Christmas? I am a little... <laughs> A little stretched. Lots of orders, which is fantastic. Thank you for all the people who have ordered things through my Etsy shop or have uh, contacted me personally to do commission work. I am always very grateful and thankful for uh, all those who like my work and want to reach out to me. All right, so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm using the background here, which is just a uh, flat black. It is again a Joe Sonia brand here. I can't remember which color, which black that is. Uh, when I remember later doing this video, I'll let you know. So I'm letting the back of that just kind of come through. But I like to add a little blue in there just to give it a little more depth. We'll come back into the white. All right. And by using the black and letting the black come through it gives that perception of depth now obviously I need a little sky I'm going to refold my handy dandy paintbrush of the day my paper towel I'm going to blot a little because I don't want too much paint on there let me put a little sky in there that is done with Joe Sonia's aqua again I'm just letting the black come through and it just gives that nice little illusion of sky. Again, I'm going to tip just slightly into my white. And give some clouds, some happy little clouds there. Uh, yes, I'll probably utilize the happy little trees in a little bit here. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, acrylic paint dries faster or dries darker than oil so sometimes you have to come back so now if you see it's already drying there so by giving it a little white highlight I'm helping with the illusion now see look at that because it's dry back there I can pull it and it has almost like a dry brush technique to it adds to the illusion of depth blot a little bit blot again come back little tip and as you can see it's the teeniest little tip of paint that I'm doing here now I'm using the texture of the box to help me along here also see look at that kind of neat now let's do a little on this foreground I'm also tipping into a little bit of smoked pearl which is kind of a gray white that kind of gives a little more depth to it so it looks like our mountains might have the, a little snow up there you know way up high 
I like doing um, kind of more of a fall scene so I can get a little with the colors give a little added color uh, to the background and that color here gets added into the rose mulling that I normally put around the outside of it. Today we're just going to do the scene. So now I've got my background kind of in there. Now I know I want to have water here so I'm going to just give an idea of my water where it is. Again I'm going into my aqua. Okay just add a little. What do you think? I'm not too worried about it being overlapping or or fussing too much about it. This is just a very loose type landscape. You know, a lot of times um, I look back at impressionist painters. I wanted to say paintings and painters at the same time. So look back at the impressionist painters and the paintings that they painted. Oy vey. Anyway, I look back at their stuff and you know, it's all about what the mind's eye sees. Doesn't have to be exact. It's kind of like a fooling the eye kind of thing. All right, so we've got some water in there. Now we need some trees. Notice I'm, I'm not changing my paper towel. I do have a stack of paper towels, but I'm not changing it. So now I'm gonna blot some, ready, happy little trees. I said it, I've said happy little trees. I'm gonna blot them in there. There we go. Can you see them in there? All right. So blot some over here. Again, it's giving that illusion of depth. So this will look really far away. And the more stuff you add on top of it gives that depth feeling to it. Okay, I'm going to add a little there. Maybe a touch of, no, it was a little too much black. Add a little black just to darken it up again. Again, to give the illusion of black or depth. All right, so I'll use, and notice I folded it, just so you see. I literally took it, I folded it, I folded it again, because I wanted more of a sharp edge to work with, okay? So, and then I tuck my finger in there. It wraps around my finger like so, and I just use that. All right, so let's, Nothing fancy. And these are these are really shop towels, like what you would have in um, uh, your, your uh, automotive shop. All right, you can get it at Home Depot. You can get it at any good hardware store. Um, Viva is a really good brand. Not the waffle brand, but the flat brand like this. Um, because again, it doesn't have lint in it, and that's part of the reason why you want to use it. All right, so I've got that. Now, let's see, I went into a little raw sienna. Oh, that was a little too much, so I'm going to blot it out. All right, let's just add a little more here. Ooh, oh, that is totally not what I wanted. All right, I dipped into gold. I don't want gold. All right, so that was from me painting ornaments before. Lots and lots of ornaments, still painting ornaments, still painting lots of things. It's a lot of multitasking going on in this studio. All right, a little heavy, but a little add, a little green on it. Okay, so then we start getting a little more trees in the foreground here. Let me bring it across, do a line of green there. All right, and it, literally when I do landscapes, I start from the back and I work forward, all right? It's all about that illusion of depth to it. Now, I don't have any formal training per se in uh, painting. I didn't. I went to school to be a uh, elementary ed teacher or in GED high school, and then I ended up getting a special education degree. Uh, so I taught GED high school, but I do have a bachelor's of arts in art history so I do have a very good fundamental understanding of the development of scenes like this and then I just make it up as I go sometimes you know in life you just have to dive in you know a number of years ago oh five six years ago my brother signed me up to paint a big plate with a very famous Scandinavian or Norwegian scene on it. 
And he said, my sister can do that. And God bless my brother and his faith in me. And uh, lo and behold, he was right. I could do it. So I had played around with landscapes a lot when I was younger and then didn't have a lot of opportunity to do it. But now I play more and more with it. I have a lot of fun. And those who follow me, you know, know that I just did a whole scene of the uh, part of the city of Arndal, Norway. That was a great one to do. You can find that on my Art of Lisa, A-R-T-O-F-L-I-S-E-1 on Facebook. You can find it there. I'm also on Instagram, Art of Lisa. Okay. And if you uh, like my videos, please feel free to subscribe and share them. This is kind of a fun thing to get out there and let people see what we can do. Um, decorative art is such a wonderful art form to do. You know, there's all sorts of forms of decorative art. And uh, sometimes people poo poo it and they say, well, it's not fine art, it's not this. But you know, all nationalities, all cultures have their own decorative art, their own comfort food art. You know, things that are very familiar, things you want in your home, and they're so beautiful, and they're so worth doing. Um, I find that in today's day and age, you know, we're all so stuck and caught on electronics, and I do it myself. Sometimes I'm on my electronics way too much, especially because of, you know, my business with the painting and trying to stay in touch with people and put stuff out there, but, you know... It's really quite nice just to sit back and do something that's creative and fun and just something that gives you peace. All right, so now we've got a nice little scene going on here. So we have stuff in the foreground. Maybe I have some rocks in there. Let's see, can I get a little... Sometimes I like to make it look like the water's coming right up. Add a little more blue, remember? Oh, now I'm going to break down and actually use another piece of paper towel. All right, so let's see here. Let's add a little more of that aqua. Remember I said acrylics dry darker, so you're going to have to come back and flesh it out a little bit. Oh, I got a little of that green in there. But really, that's okay because I've got green back here and it's kind of a reflection, you know? So let's add a little more highlight to my sky there we go a little bit more there remember I said I wanted to add maybe some rocks or something up front here okay we'll add some rocks okay maybe my water is drifting in and out a little bit between the shoreline here so we'll add a little shoreline out all right, well, there's a basic idea of it. Well, now my red, you see how it's lightening up back or darkening up back there? I want to add a little bit. So I'm coming back to my vermilion. I used red earth and Norwegian orange first. Maybe I want to add a little of my Turner's yellow just to give it a little pop there. All right. All right, so now finally I'll break down and use a brush here. I am using a, oh, this is my Jackie Shaw that is so old that they don't make it anymore. Don't mind my arm in front of the camera. All right, let's see if I can get some little reeds and stuff coming up. All right, we'll take some reeds. You know, when you're down the shoreline, you get a little flora and fauna coming up there. Go into the white, go back into the black, dip into a little of the yellow, and I'm literally just flicking the brush up, right? Flick, flick, flick. You have stuff in the foreground. It looks like maybe I need a little white in here. Let's just add a little. Okay. You know how the water kind of rings around the shoreline there, kind of comes around. Ready? There we go. There you go. Give a little reflection there. Oh, see, we got the mountain reflected down in the water. Oh, I like that. What else can we do? We can add. I got a nice scrubby brush here. Another old one. It has. It's all flat in there. So what I'll do is maybe go into the vermilion. I'll 
pop in a little bit of red. Nice little color there. Maybe add a little back here. Adds a little texture. Again, adds to the depth to it. All right. Let's see. All right. Well, this kind of gives you a basic idea of how I do a landscape. It's kind of fun, and it's well worth trying it at home. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and that you all have a blessed day. Remember, it's just paint. Try it, enjoy it, and take care. Bye-bye.